Hey YouTube, I'll try to make this quick. This is a Harbor Freight welder that I was given. And uh, because it was AC, 90 amp flux core only, I decided to convert it. So I went on YouTube and saw some good videos on how to do that. I encourage you to do that if you're looking to uh, wire it up. Um, this is just a testament to the quality of the welder once it's done. And I'll just go over the components that are used. Very simply, the two components that are that are used are a bridge rectifier and a capacitor. If you look at the other end of the casing there, you'll see a black box that's horizontally mounted and it's got two uh, screws, silver screws. That's the bridge rectifier. It's 150, 150 amp or 150 volt, uh, single phase. Uh, I believe it's 150 amp. But uh, that works great along with a large capacitor. This particular one is a Mallory 24,000 microfarad 75 volt and those are really the only two things you need to make the conversion the results are pretty dramatic with the decrease of spatter and the increase of heat of the of the arc and the uh, smoothness of the weld it really is dramatic and uh, you can go on YouTube and see some guys who have uh, basically done the same thing and get the same results so what I was doing since I was given the welder was putting as few dollars as I could into this and those two components there along with some wire cost me $25. In addition to that, I added a toroidal coil which uh, smooths out the current even further. That's just a ferrite ring with some six gauge wire wrapped around it. It works very well and it's uh, wired up essentially uh, one end going to the uh, negative of the coil or a uh, capacitor and then the other end is going to the torch and so like I said it, it uh, works in conjunction with the capacitor which smooths out the current that's coming from the from the bridge rectifier and then the coil smooths out that even further and it works real well and if you can see that hole back there I added a fan uh, because this didn't have a fan to begin with, but I added that little $4 unit that I picked up at a thrift shop and put some water heater banding around it. Works well, and I don't know what the uh, duty cycle was originally, but it's definitely increased because of the addition of a fan, which, like I mentioned, didn't have it uh, to begin with. Uh, the, that essentially takes care of the conversion. What I did in, in addition to that is I extended the ground clamp and doubled the length from what was I believe six feet to now like a 12 or 14 foot because I added this uh, type of ground clamp I think it had an eight foot cable and I just uh, combined that with the original ground clamp cable so it makes it like a 14 footer but this spring is much much better than the original and the clamping is better uh, which makes for a better weld in general and the last thing I did was to add a uh, Different torch. This is a Twico style. It's a Japanese or I'm sorry a Chinese Type uh, eBay deal that you get for 40 bucks, but it's 12 feet long. So it's doubles the length which is uh, Really needed for any welder for that matter, but certainly when your lead is six feet Which is the leads on this originally are six feet uh, making a 12 foot uh, lead is really beneficial. So this gun's much more heavy duty than the, than the factory one. It's got a nice solid cable. The connection was a bit of a pain in that it basically runs through here and it's sandwiched in this plastic block. And what you have to do is you have to Dremel out this to fit the the, um, the brass connector that's basically resting in here. It's a threaded brass connector that you clamp on a ring clamp and uh, that's where you draw your power from. This is the power that's drawn from that. And so it's a bit of a pain in the ass uh, because you have to Dremel it out. But all that plastic block does is sandwich that in. And the real key is to line it up with the wheels of your feeder and once you can do that then you'll be fine you can see that's really not perfectly lined up but it works and it uh, once you get the wire fed in there it works well 
So I encourage you if you're uh, looking to upgrade your Harbor Freight, you're not looking to upgrade your welder in general, you're just looking to make some additions to the one you have, the Harbor Freight uh, Flux Core only. Look into this conversion because I think you'll, you'll really find that the uh, ease of which it is to convert it and the benefit that you get out of it is really dramatic. I mean, I can't apologize, I can't fire it up and weld it for you. I don't, I'm not a welder, but I can show you the dramatic effect that I had on this. Look at the spatter on this. Now, clearly, I'm not a welder by looking at those welds, but you get the idea with the spatter. And this illustration is simply for this the amount of spatter that I was getting. This is the same setting that you're going to see from this. This is from an AC uh, weld on this machine. And then adding the uh, adding the uh, conversion of the uh, bridge rectifier, you can see how it lessens the spatter. And then adding the capacitor, uh, here's what it, how it even further lessens the spatter. I haven't done one with the uh, the coil, the toroidal coil. Um, but it does it even even more and it makes a better a smoother weld it's not so much that it lessens the spatter even more than this but you can just see that that is dramatic and and there's no change in the settings this is the same settings as my whole point of showing this not the shitty welds and things of that nature it's just the amount of spatter given the full ac with the just the bridge rectifier which actually works without a capacitor, and uh, but that's what you get. And then when you smooth it out with the with the capacitor and the bridge rectifier, you can see it just lessens it. Or you can work now on your welding and try to get a decent bead going. So anyhow, just wanted to show you that and uh, tell you if you're looking to do this, uh, I encourage you to to uh, give it a shot. If uh, if you're not looking to upgrade completely another with another welder, I've since bought another welder uh, because I want the benefit of the MIG gas, and so I went and uh, picked up a little Lincoln. And uh, but for a flux core, this is really all I would need. And in fact, anything that I do outside, uh, it'll be done with this. And the uh, the little Lincoln that I bought is just to start using the gas and try and practice with that. But for this conversion, I think it's well worth the amount. All in with the gun and everything, I spent 80 bucks. Again, I was given the welder, so you know I don't have that investment in this. But uh, I don't think I would buy this unit and then do a conversion because for $200 you can go get a, a nice flux core only welder. And it's it's DC negative already, so that would be a waste of money. But if you already own one and you're not looking to upgrade, um, definitely look into this because it's very simple to do, and you can get away with uh, spending, like I said, about thirty dollars, twenty-five to thirty dollars, depending on how cheap you can get your capacitor and your bridge rectifier. It's all you need.